Welcome to CAS 133 Introduction to Computers, Columbia Gorge Community College in the Dalles, Oregon instructor Linda Hewitt. In this video we're going to be looking at how to get started in the CAS 133 course shells on Moodle. There are actually two different course shells and this video is going to cover both of them. One course shell is for the hybrid. It will look like this. This is the course shell for the hybrid course. The other course shell is for the online version and it will look more like this, at least it does today. Understand that these course shells are living, breathing things, well not quite, but almost. And they do get edited and changed as we go. So we're going to take a little tour so that you have a better idea of what you're going to find when you get here. The main information from the course is right down the middle. You could basically do the whole, whole course and totally ignore both sides. But for right now, we're going to also look at the sites. There is a college library homepage, which is going to be useful for you to find out when the college is open for the library use, because some of you are going to need to use college machines, at least for part of the time. College also has a copy of the textbook. You can get by the first two weeks without owning the textbook, and after that, you can do zero work in the class without having the textbook in hand which may mean that you have to sit at the library to do all your work if your book is delayed by mail, financial aid, or any other sort of crisis. If you reach the beginning of the third week, you don't have the book, you need to let me know immediately and we need to come up with a plan if you don't live in the Dallas area can, or, and or cannot use the community college library for some reason, work schedule, whatever. Unfortunately, unless it's going to be there within a week, or even a few days less than a week, you're probably going to need to look at dropping the class. So just be aware that the book is that critical. I know when I was in college that was not always the case, but it is for this class. I also suggest you order the book immediately upon getting my intro letter. So if this is your first day exploring, if you've not gotten the book either at the college bookstore or ordered, you need to do so yesterday. And I suggest you order from a reputable company, maybe Amazon.com or something like that, and you pay the extra for expediting the shipping. I had one student that the class started the first week of April, and it was not until the second week of May that her book arrived from some, I'm not even sure where she ordered, company. Um, obviously, she actually ended up having to drop the class on the last date of possible drop because was never able to get caught up. So just a little heads up going into this. So this is an important thing to know, but you can hide it. In fact, you can hide a number of them. And then you can open them again over here on this side. Upcoming events, calendars, all of those things again can be opened and closed. This navigation could be opened and closed. You see there aren't many things showing, but I can open individual ones or I can close them. So if you accidentally click on something and things start going away, you'll want to come in over here and figure out what you hit and closed. Notice at one point in time I was looking down along this edge. Now looking in the other version, same types of things happen when you open and close those navigation boxes. The home library page is still there. The calendar is still there. All the main class information is down the middle. All your settings, your profiles, your assignments. You can get to assignments and forms there. And if you close that, you can open it again. So just kind of be aware that those are like shortcuts to places. There are ways to get you there, um, allow you to open and close things, but they're not critical to the course. What's critical is down through this center box right through here. So now with that said, let's kind of work our way through. You need to read this and read this carefully. This tells you about attendance. Yep, you have to do attendance even online. That means you log in and you're doing the work. Um, it talks about what book you need to have and remind you, and I send you the exact information in the letter that is sent to your email that has like the ISBN number on it and everything. It's in the course syllabus. Please don't go wandering around and looking up books other places, even on the college web textbook website, and start to order something different than what I have listed. I have listed what we're using. As you scroll down, you'll notice the first section you come to in both courses 
is going to be the course information. Notice I've kind of switched both boxes, but you'll notice it's really just the same thing other than slight coloring differences. And those coloring differences are more to keep me from being confused of where I'm logged into when I'm working than it really is for you. Basically, the video will be right here when it gets uploaded. You probably have already found it since you're now watching it. Here's a transcript to go with it, which won't be needed once it's on YouTube. Instructor and class information, some basic class structure. These are required readings. Go through and read them before you get started in the class, those first few days. What do you need to do to be successful? Class syllabus. If you have not read the one I attached to the email, please read this one. Course content, grading rubric. Don't ask me how I grade. It's right there. Please check it on that. Late work policy. If you're going to get stuck with some late work in a situation, don't just randomly start doing strange things or sending me a bunch of emails. The first thing you have to do is if the links have closed, you have to email me to see if I will even accept your late work. If I accept your late work, then you need to go read this policy so you have submitted in the correct manner exactly. If you are not aware of netiquette and how you should behave in an online situation, what is acceptable and what is not, please make sure you read those. Again, yeah, um, extra credit information is right there. Read it. Please don't send me an email and ask, do we have extra credit for this class? Because you'll let me know you did not read this. Extra credit files are right there. Don't email me and say, I can't get the pictures for the extra credit projects. Help, help, because I have downloaded them all. In fact, at no point should you have to go to the textbook website to get your things. I have it all here in Moodle to save you that agony because that book site is not an easy one to get things from. Calendar of due dates basically just refers you back to the Moodle set of times. Instructors forum. This is where I write messages to you. It should be checked at least two to three times a week at the minimum. You will get them as email notifications as well. So you're going to want to make sure you check those emails frequently. And mentioning emails. You're going to want to make sure your email in Moodle, your email in student services, and your email that I'm using are all the same email address. Otherwise, we just chase emails all term. And please make sure each time you send something to me, it comes from the same email address. It should not be a shared email. It should be yours and yours alone. If you are married or with someone and you typically use a shared email, I suggest you switch over and use your Columbia Gorge student account. Legally, I cannot send you grade information or any other information about the course, um, personal information about the course, like missing work or any of that to a shared account. It's that it's like HIPAA, but it's the FERPA law. And so I need you to be using account that is just yours. If I don't know it, it might happen. But if I know it, you won't get the information. Coffee shop, chat and bit. That's really asking others questions. I need a ride to a face-to-face -face class. If you want an answer to a question, it's something that I should answer, don't put it in the coffee shop. Send me an email and ask me the question. I'll be glad to answer it, but you have to send it to me. I do get coffee shop emails, so you may eventually get an answer that way too, but it's not your most efficient way. Information on CAS tutoring is a little each different each term, so you'll need to check that out and see what is going on for the term, but there is tutoring offered by CAS teachers for you to use if you need it. Here's some class support lists. These are only if you needed some help things, Moodle tutorials, ADA disabilities information, the e-textbook. What we have found with the e-textbook is one, there are a couple of things that don't work very well in it. And two, you almost have to have two computers, one with the e-book pulled up so you can look at it and one to actually do your work on. So if you have an iPad and you can pull the e-book up on it, look at it and do it on your laptop or your desktop, that works pretty well. If you're trying to do it on just one machine, you may wish you had bought the paper copy. I also find most students like to keep this. It sort of becomes their computer Bible. It has a lot of good basic introductory information you may need at a later date. And the ebook does go away after a certain point in time. You can only keep it for so long. There are also how to take a test PowerPoints. There are information on inserting pictures, um, how to take the test in PowerPoint and video. How to get sound to work with viewing a PowerPoint. If you need to edit your information in Moodle, like your name, it needs to be your legal name that's used at school. And if that's not really your current legal name, you need to get student services corrected. 
because we I cannot give you a grade if you're called Smith in Student Services and Jones in Moodle. In fact, you probably won't even get into Moodle that way. So you need to make sure those names match. I need a PC. People sometimes think they can use their Android phones, their iPhones, their iTouches, their iPads, or their Mac. But I have a MacBook Pro. I have a really cool, great, neat computer. Yes, you do. But this is a PC-based class, and the Windows software and the Office software that we're using is made by Microsoft, which goes on PCs, not on Macs. Therefore, you cannot use a Mac in this class for anything. It won't work. I don't get the answers to your test. Your Mac software Windows or uh, Office version is slightly different. It doesn't have the right boxes and buttons and things to push to make it work for the assignments. Um, it's not anything against Macs. They just don't work with the software and the textbooks that we need to have. So given that, the only way you can use a Mac is if it has a Windows platform on it so you can start it as though it was a, pers a pretend PC. After that, you get down into the first week, and you'll notice the work just continues. Here's your, your title. This is your support resources. They are optional, but if you're stuck, this is where you go to figure out how to do some things. This is one of your most important things. Notice it's in red. It's in red in both classes. There is a reason it's in red in both classes, and that's because it's one of the highest priority things that you're going to be doing this term. And that's looking at the Windows instructional material. Those are the materials that are basically my lessons, my PowerPoints, my lectures, if you were in a face-to-face -face class. Then you've got your goals, your summaries, and basically, this is kind of a, a wrap the directions together. It's not the details, but it kind of gives you a quick down and dirty of some of the directions. You do need to see the more specific ones in the instructional materials. And then this is kind of the at the end checklist. Did I remember to do anything and did I miss something? And then this is a practice test directions. It continues into each week. Um, this week you'll notice there's an assignment link for downloads and you typically will see the assignment submission links those aren't showing in the student view right now because the terms not active and live but when the terms active and live you will see the links that will allow you to um, basically go in there and upload your information to turn your work in at no point are you printing it mailing it copying it and turning it in at the college None of those things are happening. Everything is submitted electronically one of two ways. If you are done and on time, it's submitted through where it says assignment submission, and there are links that look like this below it. And if you are late, you are emailing me to find, I'm, and I mean really late, late enough to have the links closed, then you're emailing me to find out if I'll accept it, and then you're reading the late work policy to do it correctly. Work is due every Saturday night at midnight, and no, I'm probably not sitting up waiting for it, so if it's a couple of minutes late, got hung up on a server or something, I'm pretty generous with that. But once we get to Sunday morning, it's pretty much considered late work after that. So it's now Sunday morning. I'm up. I've shut the forum. You cannot do a forum late ever. They have to be done the day of, and you have to do two posts each day for each form. You post your reply to whatever question I have asked and then you have at least a conversation with one other person. This conversation needs to be more than uh-huh, yeah, I agree or hey man, cool. You need to give some thought, two to three sentences with some some depth and thought to it. So there are two posts each time for your forms. Those cannot be done late. So come Sunday morning, those are closed. Then what happens is one week after it's due, I close those links for all the work. So you have one week to do it in, one week to submit, submit it as late work for a slight loss of points. And after that, everything's shut down. Should you get past that point for whatever happens, maybe it's a serious life situation, then you need to contact me and find out if I will accept your late work. My email address is posted right here in both classes. Please be sure that's the address you are using. Please do not use Moodle messaging. I know it exists. I do not check it, and half the time it doesn't give me my messages. 
Now maybe this new newer version of Moodle will be nicer to us, but do not count on it. If you do not hear back from me within the first 24 hours, I may not have gotten it, and definitely if you've not heard in 48 hours, you need to be contacting me again. If you're using different emails than the one I have on file, it may be going to spam filters. Um, if you're using Moodle messaging, I may never see it. So please make sure you are using email and the same email address. If you have any questions, I'm usually pretty quick on replies, so make sure you send me a question before things get further and further behind. Remember, when you come in, you're basically reading right straight down this center. Everything else on the sides are basically extra. It's right here for everything in the class. When you come into a week, start at the top. Know that these are optional so you don't have to open them. And then open every single link. Do all the material. Not just part of it, do all of it. Go back to the link, go to the next one, open the next information. Keep doing that with each and every one of these links until you have read and done everything that is there. As you can see here are the directions for a test. So just keep going back link after link one after another. Shouldn't be confusing, shouldn't get lost, just keep going straight down from the top. And remember the support materials are at the top each time. Thanks a lot. Welcome to class.